today's project diary, I will teach you the causes behind leaf curl. Hi guys and welcome to Project Diaries. In today's video, I'm gonna combine quite a few videos all in one, mainly because people keep asking me about my lemon trees. Uh, now, I have already done a walkthrough video of uh, all the damage the storm caused this year, but I didn't include my lemon trees, mainly because I thought they were dead. Uh, they were all the way up to <laughs> up past here and they basically got snapped off and I just left them for dead but they actually started to bounce back but they are having a lot of problems with uh, leaf curl. Now leaf curl can uh, be uh, a sign for lots of different problems uh, so I'm going to go through them all uh, hopefully today. Now this one here as you can see it's, it's drooping, the, the leaf is um, curling underneath itself and it just doesn't look healthy. This is due to underwatering. Now the reason why I've stopped watering these is for another leaf curl problem. Uh, now let me see if I can find it. I'll give you a close up. So as you can see here, these leaves are showing some kind of signs that there's something wrong. Now younger trees will show a lot more stress than a well established mature tree. But as you can see in this example, the leaf is trying to curl up underneath itself. The reason for this is it's trying to protect itself from the sunlight to stop something called photosynthesis. Now leaves trying to shade themselves from sunlight is a sure sign for a long period of overwatering. Now all the storms and rain that we've had has completely drenched the garden and these little trees didn't like it at all. So the best thing is to bring these indoors and dry them out. So obviously I thought these were dead so I neglected them quite a bit. So that leaf cow isn't anything to do with what's going on above ground. Um, even though it is, the leaves are trying to tilt over and stop that photosynthesis, it's mainly to do with the root system. Now if I can just carefully pull that out, you can see that there are some lovely roots there, but this plant is, is almost a year old and the root system should be a lot more developed by now. And this is basically because of overwatering. Um, so basically it, it's absorbing too much sunlight and, and the... Um, the water is actually um, suffocating or drenching the the, uh, the roots and it can't soak up enough water so it doesn't want as much light. So the way to solve this is basically just to give them a good drought. You basically need this soil to dry out. Now thankfully I've actually been doing this for the past few weeks so the leaves are bouncing back um, really well. Um, so the other trouble is, is pest control and it can look like this. Now I'm going to start off with one of the easiest ones here. As you can see the leaf is really underdeveloped, slightly wrinkled and warped. It's also showing signs of yellowing of the leaves. Now while yellowing of the leaves can show many different signs, these small yellow dots are a clear indication of pest infestation. Now this can be caused by many different pests that can attack your plant, such as aphids and mealybugs. The small webbing at the top of the leaf is a clear sign this is spider mite. These pests start feeding on your leaves at early stages, causing them to stunt in growth and gives the distorted texture. A variety of pests feed from the leaf from underneath, which causes the slight yellowing and spots. If left untreated, this infestation can spread all over your plant and eventually stunt its growth. This leaf here is fairly similar in its deformities, but this is caused by citrus chlorotic dwarf virus, also known as CCDV. This is caused by whitefly infecting your plant with a pathogenic fungus. Clear signs for this are chlorotic flecking of younger leaves. This will cause warping, curling, inverted cupping and a spoon shaped leaf. This can affect all citrus trees such as lemon, grapefruit, mandarin and orange. If left untreated this can infect your entire tree and also transplant over to other trees if you're grafting. Here is another fungus that could be early signs for cherry leaf spot. This fungus starts to spread and develop just before leaf fall and early signs for this are a yellowing of the leaves just before they start to drop. Much like black spot on roses, this fungus can overwinter on dead leaves that have fallen to the ground and its spores can spread over a rainy spring season. These lesions first appear as small purple spots that later turn into red and brown. At a later stage, these spots will then turn black and cover the majority of the leaf. These spots will then amalgamate all over the surface of the leaf and eventually cause holes. If left untreated at early stages, this could cause your tree not to bloom, or if your tree does start producing fruit, it could then affect those. You can treat this in the same way as black spots, so check out the link on the screen now. And don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to keep up to date on all of my future releases. Here is another fungus called peach leaf curl. This fungus is slightly different than the others because it can overwinter on young buds, and in the following spring, this fungus will then attack the entire new growth. 
Only the early new leaves will be infected and later leaf growth shouldn't show any signs of infection. But this early infection is detrimental to the health and growth of your tree as it will cause the leaves to die and drop early, stopping the photosynthesis for the plant, which means your plant won't absorb enough energy to produce a really good fruit yield. In very low cases, this can also infect the fruit. Now this one I found really interesting. This is caused by gall mites. These are much smaller than spider mites and can't really be detected by the naked eye. Despite not being able to see them, their presence is detected by these small bumps, much like a mosquito bite on human skin. While the mite is feeding off the plant, it secretes a chemical into the plant tissue that causes these little bumps. Despite this, your plant's health shouldn't be affected. There are no active treatments to stop this, so it's something you're just going to have to put up with. This leaf is most common, but really hard to diagnose. The leaf edges curling up could be an intermittent temperature, meaning it could be getting too hot in the day or too cold at night. This could also be a sign for overwatering. The slight leaf discoloration could also be an overwatering sign, but again, it could be an underwatering sign as well. But if it's underwatering, your leaves will more than likely curl under or wilt. The discoloration of the leaves can also be a sign for nutrition deficiencies. A manganese deficiency will first start showing on younger leaves, whereas a magnesium deficiency will first start showing on older leaves. It's also advisable to do a pH level on your soil, as this could be a sure sign that your growing medium could be too alkaline. So as you probably know, lemons are not native to England, so they're just not used to this kind of cold climate, and especially the fact that we've had so much rain over the summer, these have just been drenched. Now you really don't need to water citrus, uh, or especially lemon trees, as much. So what I'm gonna do is help these dry out a little bit more by putting them in bigger pots, using dry soil, and hopefully this will allow the root system to branch out and establish a little bit stronger roots. So I'm just gonna show you how to do that in a close up now. So I'm just going to use a medium sized pot that I've got and make sure it's got lots of drainage holes. Now citrus are heavy feeders but at the moment I've only got multi-purpose compost because I've been unable to turn my homemade compost heap due to a back injury. So these will need a really good citrus fertiliser once a week. Now the stem is really strong so I'm going to pull it out by the stem really gently and then tease out the root system by breaking down the soil gently as well. This will allow the younger roots to go into the new soil and become a lot healthier. I want the tree to roughly sit an inch lower than the pot's rim, as this will also help with watering later. Then all you need to do is fill the soil in around the sides. Also if you'd like to make this really handy soil scoop, check out the link on the screen now, where I teach you how to make 6 really easy and free garden tools using old plastic milk bottles. Once you've done that you want to push the soil down gently in order to make the tree sturdy but not too hard to stop the roots growing into the new soil. Top the soil up around the edges if it needs it, but don't go above the original soil line. Once you start watering again, this could cause the stem to rot if you pot it too deep. If you haven't seen my how to grow lemon trees from seed video, check out the link on the screen now. If you find any large chunks in the soil, you want to break these down as well. Now citrus really need lots of warmth and lots of sunlight. So if you don't have these, you really want to bring these indoors and put them in a sunny windowsill. Or better yet, if you built a shed like mine or have a greenhouse, it's better to keep them warm in there until the summer temperatures start to rise. So there you go, now usually I'd water a new pot in, but as I'm trying to get this soil to dry out, I'm definitely not going to water it now. Uh, as you can see, I've left a little lip on the top, this is going to help for watering later on. Uh, but what I'm also going to do is now I'm going to bring these back indoors because the temperatures are dropping in the autumn. So I'm going to put these in Grandad's spare bedroom. Now I am going to use the, uh, the self-facing uh, sunniest window sill to put these on and hopefully the heating within the house is going to allow these to grow and establish and, and pretty much grow back and survive. I am absolutely amazed that there's so much new growth and these are really are bouncing back. So I've just got to repot the other one but I'm not going to do that in this video. But hopefully you've enjoyed today's video on uh, curly leaves. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it uh, and hopefully I'll see you again soon. Don't forget to subscribe. Take care. If you'd like to keep up to date on all of my future releases, click the subscribe button here. Here are some links to some of my other videos. And if you tried this or any other project, I'd love to see your progress, so please join my Facebook gardening group where thousands of people are sharing photos and ideas daily. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.